Okay, so you guys enjoyed the transmission, the race transmission video so much that I thought I would dive into clutch setups and how the clutch is actually one of the most important tuning to tools that I have in this car. Y'all hang in there and we'll dive into some uh, clutch information here and how it can actually affect you in your street car, your performance car, or your full-blown race car. Let's get into that. Nut job. <laughs> Keep in mind, I know a lot of you guys are deep in the game, and you know there's tons of different available options available and different styles. I'm gonna focus on three in the big picture, three different variations. Uh, a very basic kind of a street and strip idea, and then the race one I use. There are much more advanced clutch set setups out there than what I use. Also, what I use is, well, it's in the car. So, as I'm talking, you'll have to use your imagination a little bit, but I do have some old footage uh, that got cut and edited out of a video on adjusting that clutch. I'll put that in there, and then we'll talk about that a little bit and try to use that footage to help you understand. Also, as I've said before, I try to keep the terminology and stuff so that everyone that watches can understand what I'm saying, not just the guys that know all the information because well, you already know all the information so i have a oh wow you set up here that uh was really going to get thrown in the scrap pile and just hasn't yet and then i've got a set that's been sitting on the shelf for a long time uh i actually picked it up for a uh vehicle that eventually i'll build uh it's a pretty good setup but um it's kind of the in-between, and then we got the big dog that I use in the car that we'll get to. So let's start here with this setup. Now there's two different basic configurations for a pressure plate. Now again, yes, there's many, many more, but there's two basic variations. There's these that have the three fingers on them, and then there's ones they refer to as a diaphragm, which has a bunch a little fingers sticking up like this with the hole in the center that I, and I swore I had one sitting here and for some reason I cannot find the diaphragm uh, laying around here I don't really ever use a diaphragm style so now in stock form right out of the box you will see more of this style in trucks and more of the diaphragm style in cars uh, and it really the very basics of it really is that these have more clamping force. So if you like towing a load, it clamps harder and all. But they're also, especially in an older vehicle that has the metal Z-bar, not hydraulics or anything, they, they take more pressure. You have to push on them a little harder with your foot to work these. So they use the diaphragm more or less for comfort going down the road. I do prefer these because they have a little more clamping force so with that being said i don't have the diaphragm one i can't show it to you i will find a picture and insert a diaphragm style right here and that way you've got a comparison of the two i do like this now this is a stock ford pressure plate there's nothing out of the ordinary about this it's just a stock ford pressure plate this is also a stock Ford clutch disc. Think of this, if you're not familiar with how clutches work, think of this as how your brakes work. If you have a, well, it doesn't matter if you've got drums or discs in this, in this illustration. This is the brake pad. And this surface here, this rusty surface right here, in your flywheel, are the rotor basically and the and this is your brake pad this is an abrasive surface that grabs and transfers the power from your flywheel your motor your crank to your 
to your spline for your transmission input. So it transfers the power from your engine to your transmission, which goes out the rear end. Uh, this material right here works great for the street. It's a great daily driver. Uh, it's something that has a good enough clamping force so that driving around every day, you don't have any issues that you can uh, stop lot, stop lot, drive around town, combine with a pressure plate like this with a truck. You can, you know, uh, like my ramp truck has a style very much like this because it's still stock. Uh, you can put weight behind it. It'll tow it all day long. It's just made to grab a hold and just do its job. There's nothing exceedingly ex uh, crazy so about if you're it. In a, if you've got a street car and you want to play with your street car, you uh, upgrade from a version of this, which is bone stock forward production stuff, that with power and clutch dumps will, will cause it to slip and it will eventually burn this material up, especially if you're trying to stage one and you're, you're on and off and bump it in. This material will not last. Uh, uh, the term riding your clutch, th it eats these up. You have to upgrade to this style. These are rebuildable. This is actually a RAM setup. You can send these back to RAM and they will rebuild these for you. Everything about them is rebuildable. Uh, this will allow you to take a little more power for your street and strip. You can drive this around town. It has the ability to, to the good friction to grab and allow you to ride around town and uh, do your daily commute if you wanted to. But it also is set up in a way that it can handle those clutch drops and, uh, and that power you throw into it to try to go red light, red light. Now, this works great on the, it's kind of deceiving. They, they say street and strip, and these work great on a street for a performance application. But let's face it, and, and again, it runs the same three-finger style pressure plate. Now, they call these a street and strip kind of setup, but honestly, if you're running on a strip, this is not going to be your friend. And this right here is definitely not going to be your friend. A glued down surface changes the game in the big picture. It, it changes everything. Now, there's a lot more technical stuff we can talk about about these, but I'm basically just giving you an idea as I work your way up to what I run in the Galaxy. When you are on a glued down surface, it changes the game. You can't. You, you don't want your material to grab and transfer instantly. You don't want that. That breaks stuff. When this thing grabs suddenly and you're at three grand on the tack and you're at the, the light, the, the, the flywheel is in here just free spinning and it's three grand and this thing's just kind of sitting in here doing its own thing and the pressure plate's sitting back here. With the pressure off this and this is just kind of doing its thing hanging in there and you're at three grand and you drop that clutch and this grabs all of that force and all that shock just hammers the rear tires because they're not going to spin in theory now of course we all know that lack of traction they can spin but on a glued down surface the likelihood is they're not going to spin they're going to do what we refer to as dead hook when you have a clutch like this a pressure plate like this and you dead hook those slicks on that glued down track, shit will break. That I mean, it may not do it the first time, it may not do it the second time, but it will do it. This will last you longer than this will because of the material and the way it's made up. It will last you longer physically, but it is not your friend on the track. On the track. I use something we refer to a lot, the old school term for it. You don't see it listed as this anymore, I don't think. But the old school terminology for it was slipper clutch. It has a centered iron disc in it. I don't think I actually have any photos of the disc. I'll find a photo online and insert it here. This is a centered iron disc. It is much different than this, you can see. Centered iron discs are not only rebuildable, but you can actually put them on a machine 
and turn them like you do, say, a brake rotor. You can actually turn them and retrue them. I'm running the same clutch disc in this car that I've been running since 20, 20, I've got, I've got over a hundred passes on this clutch disc. I've got over a hundred passes on it and I did have it resurfaced once. Now the, again, they are completely rebuilt, not this one with the warning center. They are completely rebuildable by RAM, but I've got over a hundred passes on it and I stuck it on a, it looks almost kind of like a brake lathe. I stuck it on the machine, flipped it on, run the tooling down it, and resurfaced it. All that does is over time, again, this isn't, this made different than this. You've seen it in the photo. Over time, they don't wear even. So you put it on there, you turn it, wear it, bring it back down to even again. That way you get true clamping force across the entire face of this pressure plate. You want to clamp from here to here. You don't want to clamp here and or here or down here. You want to clamp from here to here because you want it all. Now the difference in the pressure plate between what I run and this one is, this one is pretty advanced, but this one is set at a certain pressure, a base pressure we call it. Mine is adjustable. Each one of these holes has a set screw in it that I can turn and change the amount of pressure that is in the pressure plate, the base pressure, if you will. What that allows me to do is, just as the name used to imply, slip the clutch. Now, I'm not talking about just spinning it in there. I'm talking about, you know, just a little, that's all you want. What you want to do is take some of that shock out of the system that smacks that back tire. By doing this, you can control how hard or how soft that car launches. My car is a beast. I can make that thing launch like you're going to a Sunday drive, or I can make it snatch so hard it snaps the rear end out of it. All by adjusting these set screws in or out. Now, inside here, this one has it, but they're not adjustable. Inside here, if we can get the camera to focus, you can see springs right there. These springs have a rate just like any other spring. And they're, without the paperwork in front of me, I don't remember what they are, but say they're 500 pounds base pressure. That means the way they sit, they have 500 pounds of clamping force on this clutch when you let off of it. Every time you put a turn in it, it's not equal. It doesn't go one turn, 600, one, another turn makes it 700. It has a progressive rate in it. So if you turn it, if it's 500 base and you turn it one turn, uh, that may be 750, but one more turn may be 1200. You know, and it, that's not the real numbers, but what I'm saying is it's not. It, it has to do with the spring rate that RAM has in here. And you get a paperwork and all with that. Now, that is for the launch. The one that I have has ears that stick out back here on the opposite end of these fingers. You can put counterweights on there. The counterweights do the other end of the spectrum. So, if at three grand, I slip the clutch a little bit when I first hit it, and then it starts to grab. These counterweights, the more RPM you turn, the tighter it makes that thing grab. So by the time I'm shifting it seven grand, this thing's like got jaws of steel just clamped on that clutch, so there is no movement. So when I bang that gear, there is no movement. I get every ounce of torque from that motor to the back tires. That works going down the track because you're not sitting still, shocking that system all at once. You're already got that forward momentum. If you watch my car going down the track and when I bang the gears, depending on the counterweights I'm running, you will see the back of my car do this. And that's because it just banged that next gear, but it's not shocking the tires. It's just rocking the car a little bit. And I'm getting every bit of torque out of that motor slammed right to the tire. There is no loss this way. You get exactly what's dumped out of that flywheel to the back end this way. Now, I'll insert that video clip uh, from way back. It's a little rough, it's a little grainy, and it was on a different platform. And it'll show you exactly how I adjust that. Sounds counterintuitive, but you turn this righty like you tighten it, and you, you 
and it loosens it up. So now it's taking all the pressure off. You turn it, you'll feel it like right there. It wants to bite. So then you'll take that and you'll count your turns and you'll set it up whatever your setup is. I'll show you like, it, you can you can feel this thing just loose flopping around right there and it bites right there. So then that's like a half a turn, one turn. And then you just go through and you set them all the same, mark them so they're all set the same. In a perfect world, when everything is correct, that makes the pressure even all the way around. Now, there's much more advanced technology in clutches than what I'm running. You have multi-disc clutches. You have... Uh, the, there, there's clutch setups now that literally have computerized uh, pressure plates on them that you can set up. A, I, it, it's endless. It's endless. But for my application, with the transmission, paired with the transmission that you've seen in the previous video that I've done, that slipper clutch works perfect for me. But it requires testing. So what you do is you go out, you get up RPM, you set it to a certain base that you think works. You get up some RPM, let out on a clutch, and send it. Now, if you realize, and you'll be able to tell, if you realize it's blowing through the clutch as we refer to it, like the RPM is slinging up, but you're not going, way too light. You need to tighten up on that. But at the same time, honestly, listen, my car will pull the front tires knee high off the ground on a launch, maybe a little less. I mean, you know, on a launch, it, it's not it's not a bumper standard, but it pulls the front tires off the ground. But the way I've got this pressure plate set up in there and the way I've got the base pressure set, it will pull the front tires up and you feel like you're sitting on your couch watching TV. It's just and sits right down and goes. And it's because I, I have it just in that sweet spot. A little tighter. And I mean, there's been passes in this car when I would change some settings that I dumped the clutch and I thought I was going to, have to pick my helmet up out of the back of the car with my head still in it. It smacked the ground when it left. And I'm not going to lie. I've snapped axles. I've snapped pinions learning how to adjust the clutch the proper way. So hopefully this will help some of y'all. And hopefully that video will help some of y'all. It is better to air a slight bit on the tight side and loosen up. You don't want to be on the loose side because you're only going to blow through that clutch once or twice and you're going to eat that clutch up. But that clutch will last you for I don't know how long with it hammering. Now, the rest of your car may not, but the clutch will. So you got to find that sweet spot. Now, it all depends on what base spring you work, you, you run, and Ram will send you different springs. The setup that I bought from Ram, I have the red hat from Ram, and the setup I bought from them, the base springs that were in it were too much, and I couldn't get enough base pressure out of mine for the launch a lot. Rams are completely rebuildable. It doesn't even matter if it's one of these. These are completely rebuildable. You can take these apart and you can change these springs in here and you can change your base pressures along with having the face resurfaced, all that. They are completely rebuildable. When you buy a Ram, you bought a clutch set up for life because the disc, if you run a centered iron disc, if the disc is wore out, well, even these discs, you can send it back and they can re resurface. They can freaking take it apart and put it, new, put it back together. You know what I'm saying? They can re, re, re. Hmm. Rebuild. It's been a long day, y'all. They can rebuild your clutch setup so that you can still run that. Same thing with your pressure plate. You can send it back to them. They can take it apart. They can do that. But honestly, if you've got a. A uh, small amount of tools in your shop, you can rebuild a pressure plate yourself. At least watch a video before you take it apart because if you think a coil spring compressor coming apart hits you in the mouth and causes damage, take one of them apart and let it smack you in the mouth. Um, anyway, two very important things. One, base pressure. That is your launch. That is how hard that car launches. And you can do that. And it's backwards of what you think it is. 
When you turn it in, you're, you're taking pressure off. When you turn it out, you're adding pressure. So that is your base. That is your, that is your, think of that is how hard your car hits when it launches. That is the, the base pressure. How, how hard that car leads. And then your counterweights. Some people don't even run counterweights. I do. Your counterweights, depending on how much your counterweight is on that pressure plate, that is, I said I was going to keep everything as simple as I could, but the only word I know for this is centrifugal force. That centrifugal force of those counterweights out there causes that thing to clamp tighter because of that weight on the end of it. It's not a lot of weight. Actually, to be honest, it's really just a bolt and a nut through there, but they're, they're the exact same weight, bolt and nut, and then you add nuts or take nuts away. That adds clamping force as you get higher in RPM. The higher the RPM, the more that centrifugal force gets out there, and the harder that thing clamps. So that when you're on the big end, and you're getting down, you're getting everything that engine has to offer at that back tire. You're, you're, you're literally getting it. You're getting all you can possibly get. If that motor makes it, you're getting it. And it helps on the shift if you tune that in just right because on the shift a lot of times if you, and that goes back to the transmission. See, it, it has to work together because think of it this way. If I, with that transmission at seven grand, I can cop right to the next gear. I'm holding up at seven grand. I've got that clutch nailed in. So when I, Click that back, it's still clamped down there, and I've got it all from that shift. I'm going down the track, so it's not smacking everything hard like it's already got that momentum going, so you get that little, and you go. If you're not running a transmission like this, but you try to run a clutch like that, it, it's not going to work the way it should, because if you have to let off the gas, push the clutch in, go to the next gear, let off the clutch, push in the gas, You've lost so many RPMs, by the time you hammer it back, you're back to your base setting, and you're going to slip a little bit when you go to the next gear, if what I'm saying makes sense to you. So it's kind of the total package. If you're going to run a stockish transmission that you have to let off of, stick, stick with a street and strip style clutch. That'll work great for that, because you're, you, you're not going to slip that clutch. So, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is, people have asked what I run. That's what I run. I run a Ram Red Hat, Ram Red Hat setup. The base pressure in mine right now, the base springs in mine, I think mine run a 550 base spring. And I've got about a round and a half in mine right now. Now, I don't know if it's going to work with this motor. I have tested. My old setup, about a round and a half was perfect. And I ran one nut of counterweight. I don't remember the weight right off of whatever that one nut weighs. One nut of counterweight on each one of those. Again, is this motor going to like that? I don't know. I won't know until I go out and test. It may want more base pressure. It may want less base pressure. I don't know. That's something you have to go to the track and play with. Now, there is certain things. Certain ways you have to set these clutches up. And again, I think I covered that in that old video. I'll go back and watch it as I do this editing. And hopefully I covered everything in there. But I wanted to give you a quick kind of walkthrough of how I use the clutch in this car as a way to tune it for the launch and for the big end. A lot like you will hear guys talk about torque converters and things you hear people talk about a lockup torque converter basically that's what i'm doing with counterweights on this thing i'm using centrifugal force to make that thing locked up i mean just absolutely locked up it's not exactly the same but it's it's comparable in the manual world to that if that makes sense what i'm saying and think of my base pressure is the way you work your stall, where you have a 2800 RPM stall. It's, it's, if you, 
right around you. Whoom, whoom. It almost sounds like a manual because you can rev it low because it's not in that style where it pulls. Same thing with the bass pressure. You tune that bass pressure so it, it grabs kind of where you need it to. It's got that little bit of slip to it and then grabs. That keeps you from breaking stuff all the way out the back. I mean, it's basically like, think of it as, on the big end, your input shaft is welded to your flywheel. On the launch, it's almost like a torque converter. It, it gives that little slush before it takes off. And that helps you save parts. My transmission has lived for six years. Partially because of the fine tuning of the clutch. My car, the the suspension has held up. The now I have broke axles in the past, but it was learning this this process. But for the most part, my car has held up because of fine tuning of that clutch. And you can make a car faster or slower by the way you fine tune that. You can make your sixty foot faster or slower by the way you tune that. This is kind of a di uh, kind of a dinosaur uh, caveman style of programming, if you will. We are tuning, you know. We don't have keyboards. We can sit out here and tippy tap and dial this thing in. I've got an Allen wrench and the old noggin up here that I've got to get the two of them dialed together and go. You know what? That last pass, I think I ate my two front molars. She left so hard. So we're gonna dial her back just a little bit. Hopefully, by the time I get down to the bottom this time, I'm not trying to pick the nose out of the back of my head because it launched so hard. And then, you know, you go this way a little bit. You're going to have to test because you need to find where your edge is both ways. You need to find where it's just violent when it leaves. I know where that is in this car. I have been on the violent side of this car. And when this bitch is mad, she's mad. And you need to find out where that, I ain't going nowhere boss side is. You need to find out those two limits. And then you know if this is, this over here is base pressure. And this over here is two rounds on the launch. Then you know you've got between a half a round and one and a half rounds to play with to dial it that in. Same thing on your big end. When you get down through there and you shift, you'll do the same thing. If if it's seven grand, you shift and that thing just snaps you back because it bangs so hard. Might not need that much extra. But if you get that little, you know, you're dancing with her. If you're going down through there and y'all start doing a two-step, that's about right. She's happy. She's wanting to get out there and go with you. You know what I mean? That's all you're wanting from her. You just want her to go with you. Hopefully, this answers some of the questions I've been asked about my clutch setup. And again, I will try to find the link uh, to Ram's site for the clutch pressure plate that I use and uh, put it in the description if I can. And you'll be able to see exactly what I use. I, I Again, and before anybody asks, yeah, there's multiple disc clutch. That's, that's you know, Pro Mod up there. That's, that's big power stuff. This setup I run, you should be able to run it naturally aspirated around 1,000 horsepower and below. Uh, now, if, you're, if you've got one of them Tokyo hair dryers or uh, some of Dr. Seuss's Giggle Juice hooked up to it or any of that stuff, you might want to, that, that's, that's a whole different tuning situation. But again, the giggle juice, you can play with how that comes in. A Tokyo hair dryer is on or off from what I understand about them. So that, that's on you. I'm a naturally aspirated kind of guy. And I can tell you that this clutch setup should be good for up to a thousand horsepower which is probably about the limit of my transmission is about a thousand horsepower the way that it's built. Now you can go, you can get things done and make it make more. But I will also tell you that if you fine tune your clutch and take some of that nastiness out of the hit, 
then your transmission can handle a little more power than what it's actually ready for because you're not just smacking it. You see what I'm saying? I'm not the greatest teacher in the world. I'm just between moving the car out, moving the Jeep in, and getting this engine right here done up, and all these moving parts. Uh, I knew it was going to be a little while before I got a video made, and I wanted to make a quick video to kind of walk through that with some people that had asked about it. Again, use it as kind of a curiosity jumping off point, and you can deep dive into these things on your own if you're interested in them, or drop a comment down there. I'll try to explain. I know I'm not the greatest teacher. I'm more of a, I do this, and less of, let me show you how to do it, because I'm not real good at that. I forget things and just kind of, you know, muscle memory, you just kind of do things, and you're like, oh, wait, I didn't tell people I've done that. You know, not a great teacher, but I will try to explain to you anything that you want to know. Um, and I've been asked about the clutch setup, so I wanted to try to explain that real quick. Um, I hope the Lord blesses you more today than he did yesterday. To him be all the glory. God bless each and every one of you who have subscribed, liked, commented, and doing all that. If you have any questions, if there was something I didn't cover, Please drop it in the comments. Again, yes, there's much more advanced versions of clutches out there. We're just basically talking about what I use and the couple of steps up to what I use. Honestly, I'll drive it on the street with this clutch set up. I mean, it's all in how you get it set up. We're going to drive this on the street because we're doing drag and drag, drive and drags this year. So um, we'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs>